Good morning, Facebook Live. Good morning. I'm Apostle J.L. Hodge with my wonderful co-host, Minister Teresha. And we are of Clarion Ministries bringing you the word of the living God this morning. Now, we normally air on Saturdays, but we do have some other uh, activities that we have planned for Saturday. So we want to make sure that we got the gospel out to you and to attempt to finish our lesson on the spiritual countdown. I said attempt yes. because there is a massive amount of information, oh, yes. Oh, yes. you know, so we want to make sure that you get that, you know, God has, has extended the reach of the gospel and over 68,000 people have viewed mm -hmm. one of the videos on the spiritual countdown and another 20 plus thousand have viewed the other video and we're just we're excited about those numbers because it says that the gospel is reaching the world the gospel the good news that Jesus Christ is alive and he cares about everything that is happening in our lives he cares about everything that is happening in the world today you can be sure that not only does he care but he wants to help he wants to help good morning good morning I see one of my beloved members has joined good morning love you so much thank you for tuning in you know uh, viewing audience there is a lot happening but we believe that God is gonna get some glory out of COVID-19 he can and he will all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose so we, you know, we, we want to bless you with the word. We want you to be encouraged by what we'll share today. Know that God has your back. Know that God has your back. Know that his word has your back. It's not going to let you down. It doesn't matter how prevailing the circumstance is. It doesn't matter how much you have heard and seen. That looks like, you know, there's just no way for things to, to work out uh, in, in, in favorably. It doesn't matter what you've seen. God, because he is God is able to take all of this mess and work it out to something beautiful you got to believe that you cannot uh, wake up and face you know your days as if there is no hope there is hope there is hope in Jesus Christ there's not hope in, in, in much else you know you you place your hope in that and then it fails but you can place your hope in Jesus Christ and it will not fail he will not fail you, you don't need to be afraid about getting COVID-19 you don't need to be afraid do the necessary due diligence, due diligence, protect yourself, but you don't need to be afraid. At the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and he's Lord to the glory of God the Father. So he's Lord over this virus. He's Lord over the economic problems it's causing. He's Lord over the ships, the uncomfortable ships. He is Lord, he is master over it all and all of it must bow its knee to the Lord Jesus. He is not impotent. He is all powerful. And he is going to take care of his people. And you may say, well, that sounds bad. What about, mm. what about me who's not saved? This is all mm. the more reason to become yes. saved, to know Jesus Christ as Savior, you know, to, to know him as your God, as your personal Savior, so that he can intervene in your life. One thing you must know about Jesus Christ is he's a gentleman. And he doesn't force himself on us and so you know you, you you may say well i want all these benefits that you're talking about about you know god providing and and giving peace and giving comfort but those things belong to those who are his and so you know if, if you don't know jesus christ if he's not your savior if you've never you know considered uh why you need to have a savior now is the time because as you look around a lot of systems are failing they are crumbling. You may have had your hope in your bank account, and now you know, you're know you not even sure how you're going to survive. You may have had your hope in your job. You may have had your hope in your education. You may have had your hope in a neighbor, wherever. But you, you're seeing that those things are crumbling, you know? And, and the only one who won't crumble, mm. the only one who won't buckle, mm. the only one who this didn't catch by surprise oh, <laughs> is the Lord Jesus My Christ. Lord. The mighty God, the mighty God, the mighty God and mighty defender of his people, mm -hmm. you know, hey, and, and God says that he makes the sun to shine on the just and the unjust. So even though, you know, someone viewing may not be born again, God's mercy is extended to you. God's mercy is extended to you. Many of you, you know, have, have, have not been ill, you know, have not contracted this virus. And that is the mercy of almighty Amen. God. 
right? So we want to we want to look at some scriptures because before we get into our lesson, we want to encourage you with the word of God. The word never fails. The word is so powerful that when God spoke it, things came into mm -hmm. being. God said, let there be, and it was so. You know, and so as we review the word, we want you to have that in mind, that the word of God, the what you cannot see is so powerful that it creates what you can see. You know, it creates what you can see. So I want Minister Teresha to read some scriptures, and then we're going to pray these scriptures. Many of our viewers like it when we pray, and we, in fact, love to pray. Amen. We love to pray for others. We love to invoke the will of God Amen. into your life by prayer. So, Minister Teresha, if you could read some scriptures to comfort our audience today. Uh, the first comes from Psalms 9 verses 9 to 10 and it states the lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed anybody else oppressed out there mm. the lord will be a refuge for you a refuge in times of trouble jesus and those who know your jesus. name will put their trust in you jesus. for you lord have not forsaken those who seek you my god and the second scripture comes from proverbs 3 5 to 6 Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Mm. This is the Lord's admonition. My God. And lean not on your own mm. understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. All right, and Father, so we thank you for your word that will not return it to you void, but it will accomplish all that you've sent it forth to do. We decree and declare right now that you are a refuge to the oppressed, uh, those who are ill, those who have actually been impacted by the COVID-19 virus. We decree and declare that you are a refuge for them. You were wounded, Lord Jesus, for their transgressions and bruised for their iniquities. The chastisement of their peace was upon you, and by your stripes they are healed. Uh, this is already done. This is done from the time that you mm. gave your life on the cross. Uh, you released your healing virtue and healing power to be to be tapped into at this very moment. So those who are ill, we claim healing for them right now in the name of Jesus. We rebuke the spirit of infirmity. It is a spirit and we rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. We command it to leave the bodies of those that are sick and to go away from our coast, go away from our countries, to go back to where it came from in the name of the Lord Jesus. May, may Lord, your presence chase it out of our borders, chase Chase it out of, of our people. Chase it out now throughout the world. Chase it out. Send it back to where it came from. Yes, and let the blood of Jesus be a border and My seal. God. Lord God, uh, 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 seal the portal that this thing came through. Mm. Father, you said that you would be a refuge to the oppressed. We claim that now for our viewing My audience. Uh, in the time of trouble, you would be a refuge. Father, mm. we are in trouble. Yes, uh, and Father, we claim you now as our refuge, uh, as our place of protection and safety, God. Uh, mm. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. God, we trust in you. No other help do we know but the name of the Lord Jesus. So we put our trust in you. We cast all of our cares upon you. Everything that is concerning us, our children, our spouses, our jobs, the economy, Lord God, all that is, it is troubling us throughout the world. We put our trust in you. We lay it down at your feet, God. And we say, Lord, handle this for us. Take care of this for us. It's bigger than I am, God. God. And so, Father, I thank you that as we lay it down at your feet, you will give us your peace. You're going to make a trade, an exchange with us. You're making an exchange, a divine exchange. You says you you say, give me your trouble and I'll give you my peace. Give me your anxieties and I'll give you my peace. Mm -hmm. And so, Father, I thank you that every person that is watching uh, would give you their trouble, give it all to you, and that you would release your peace, Father. And for those who don't know Jesus, I thank you that they would just open up their mouth right now and say, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Jesus, save me. Jesus, deliver me. Jesus, intervene. Jesus, come into my heart. Call upon the name of Jesus. The word of God declares that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. 
Father, we decree and declare that our viewing audience would trust in you with all of their heart. Father, it's, it's difficult at times to do that when everything seems like it's crumbling. But I thank you for your word that says that we can put our trust in you. Trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. Lord, we purpose not to lean onto our own understanding. God, how is this going to work out? Mm -hmm. And how is that going to work out? I have loved ones who are, who are in, in hot zones, uh, places where the, the virus is ravaging the community, the country. Father, I thank you that we won't look at those things, but we will put our trust in you. And I thank you that, Father, Lord, you're going to put it in people's hearts to begin to pray. And as people begin to pray, it's going to it's gonna chase the virus away from families and, and away from communities. God uh, is going to send it back to where it came from. Uh, I decree and declare that the church is rising up in authority uh, and speaking, Father. You said we shall declare a thing and it shall be established for us uh, and light shall shine upon our ways. Uh, Father God, we decree and declare the crushing of COVID-19 that it is crushed. Uh, it is destroyed. Uh, it is crushed under the feet of the church that know how to pray. Uh, we crush it today in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord God, we touch every respiratory system. Uh, Lord God, we touch every nasal, nasal passage uh, with the word of the living God. Uh, and we command those places of incubation, uh, Lord God, to be filled with the blood of Jesus. Uh, that the blood of Jesus uh, will begin to war and fight against uh, this virus that comes and seeks to take over the respiratory system. Father God, we release the blood of Jesus. Uh, we release the blood of Jesus. Uh, Lord God, uh, as the cure for this problem, uh, we decree and declare it's not going to take us down. Uh, it's not going to take us down. Uh, we speak to the church and declare uh, that the church is rising in strength. Uh, Lord God, putting aside fear uh, and walking in the authority of the Lord uh, and crushing the enemy who sent this. Uh, we decree and declare uh, the crushing uh, of COVID-19. Uh, we crush you with the word of God uh, because every knee must bow. Yeah, Lord. And because uh, uh, Jesus' name is the highest name, uh, we decree and declare that the knee of COVID must bow. Mm -hmm. And that its name is subject to the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. And that people will begin to recover. We are seeing older people, 97-year-old uh, 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 persons recovering. We speak it now. And Father God, we decree and declare that uh, there, there, there is a, a consensus uh, throughout the world to be our brother's keeper. Mm -hmm. We have seen where young people have not heeded the instructions and the guidelines uh, and people are still doing what they want to do. We decree and declare right now uh, that, that, that there is, you're releasing you're releasing this 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 disposition of the heart and mind to be our brother's keeper that you will convict them of their wrong of those lord who will not obey the protocols and thus giving this virus an opportunity to spread and father god you would convict them you would convict them father you would convict them and they would obey the rules and instructions that are for the benefit of the entire world Father, we just give you thanks and praise and glory and honor in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And uh, viewing audience, if you have a prayer need, we want you to inbox us. Someone from our ministry will respond to you and cover your request in prayer. We also have a number, a cell number, if you want to get in contact with us, if you want to want human to human contact, uh, you know, we're still in this social distancing, but mm -hmm. you, we can we can take a phone call. You can call us at area code 284-340-9120. That is our ministry number. You're welcome to give that number a call and someone from our ministry will be there on the other end to minister to your needs. Amen, amen, amen. All right, viewing audience. So if you have been watching our last few videos, you know that we have been conducting what is entitled a spiritual countdown for the last few weeks. And we hope that this is going to be the last. Now, Minister Teresha is going to take a miracle. But do you believe in them? Do you believe that God can work a miracle? I believe. Okay, that's all I needed. Minister T believes that God is going to work a miracle. And so by yes. his miracle working power, yes. we're going to get through to this today. Amen. Amen. All right. And so we are now at five, four, three, two, one. Spiritual countdown. You don't want to miss not a, a, a word that we're going to say 
in this last broadcast about the spiritual countdown. If you have been blessed by the other programs, this one is just going to take it over the hey, top. Jesus. It's beyond the cherry on the cake. <laughs> it's, it's beyond that. It's beyond the icing on the yes. cake. This is just going to put it over into overdrive. Mm. So you may be asking, well, how did this spiritual countdown come into play? I love how God does things. You know, I'm a pastor and I was seeking him for a word for his people. I always want something fresh, something, something for now, not something for yesterday. God, what are you saying now? And I just heard him count down 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And, you know, it took me a little while to, to, to grab a hold of what he was saying. I said, God, is that you? You know, where, where is that coming from? What are you trying to communicate? And so he reiterated, and when, you know when he gave me this this countdown, it was about ten weeks hmm. before the new year. So here he's giving me a countdown beginning from ten, and it's about ten weeks before the new year. You know, and so if you if you notice on New Year's, most people count down from ten. Some right. count down from twenty, but we tend to count down from ten. Nine, eight. You know, why why prolong it? Why 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 prolong it? Why start from twenty? Let's just get this thing done. Yes. Alrighty. And so God gave us a countdown. And so we counted down and yay, we went into the new year and and full of expectation and hope. You know, and, and now here's this coronavirus. But guess what? The word of God preceded this. The word of God came before the virus. And so that this means that everything that God said, mm. everything that God promised is true, is good, and mm. you can count on it. Mm. The coronavirus hasn't changed God's plans because whatever promise he made to you before it came, it's still good. Oh, thank you for that. I, I need to hear this yes. because God has given me some promises. And, you know, with all these shifts and changes in the global community, it's like, well, God, how are you going to get it done? Mm. He's like, I'm still God. Mm. I'm oh, yes, still God. Is. I'm not a man that I should lie, nor am I the son of man that I should repent. Have I said it and will I not do it? Have I spoken it and shall it not come to pass? And so before, you know, our current difficulties, God had spoken some words to us. And, and specifically this spiritual countdown that was a mirror of some of the things that we could expect to see as we entered into 2020. So for some of you, we know this information may be new. And you are facing circumstances which are actually pulling on the manifestation of the countdown that the Lord gave us mm. in, in 2019 mm. towards the end of the year. So your life is literally pulling on the countdown, uh, the word that God gave us. Mm. And you're saying, well, Lord, why is this happening? Mm. What is going on? And he's saying, listen, I'm, I, I want to get some things to you. I, I want to manifest my power and my glory yes. in your life. And so... You know, God often uses difficult circumstances to get that done. Oh, you know. <laughs> sure enough. Huh? Have you ever seen that minister to you? Oh, yes, Apostle. Over and over. Over and over. That God uses difficult circumstances to get his will done. Mm -hmm. All right. So what we are experiencing right now as the church and even, you know, the global community is directly co connected to the Lord wanting to manifest his goodwill in our lives through the process of challenge. Mm. You know, it, it's it's when we have challenges that we look up. <laughs> you know, yes. it's when problems are bigger than we are that we yes. start calling upon the name of the Lord. And so this COVID-19 is gonna bring some salvation into the kingdom. Jesus. Some people Thank are gonna get Lord. saved. Some people are gonna serve God. God's gonna show himself mighty. He's gonna reveal his wisdom. He's He's going to use oh, this Jesus. to bring himself some mad glory. Somebody say, hallelujah. hallelujah for that, Lord. God be glorified. Amen. All right. So we have reviewed 10 and that was for, I will give you skillful words and wisdom, which none of your opponents will be able to resist or refute. So God is saying, I've given you a mouth that is full of wisdom and you don't have to worry about what you're going to say at the moment that you're confronted with a difficult situation. Cause God says, I give you a mouth and wisdom and none of your adversaries will be able to oh, refute Jesus. what I put in your mouth. When you open your mouth, it's going to shut down some things. Mm -hmm. those, those opponents who stood up in, in front of your face and figured that they had you caught and figured oh, that Jesus. they, that you would have no answer. Oh, God says, number one, you don't have to worry about how you're going to answer them, but I've given you a mouth and wisdom. What comes out of your mouth is going to flatten 
mountains. Mm. What, what comes out of your mouth is going to cripple enemies and is going to shift some things. So God is mm. giving you a mouth and wisdom. Number nine, Yahweh Rehoboth. God is making space for you and expanding your borders, mm. but you have to keep digging past opposition. And that's Genesis 26, 18, 22. And I'm sorry, the first one was Luke 21. 15. All right, so God says, I'm making space for you, but you got to keep pressing. You can't stop. You can't give up yes, because yes. it's hard. God is making space for you. What is number eight, Minister T? Walk in the strength of vitamin K. Mm -hmm. And our scripture reference for that is Genesis 17, 12. Okay, now, if you know anything about vitamin K, vitamin K is, is uh, part of the coagulating that takes place in blood. It helps to coagulate blood. And so, you know, if you have surgery... And you, you want to make sure that your vitamin K is on point so your blood can coagulate. And, and God is saying, you know what? You need some vitamin kingdom. You need vitamin kingdom. You, you need my kingdom mm. resources mm. so that when you encounter difficult situations, things that cut you, things that, you know, are cut away from you, that, that you, are, you are able to withstand it and not bleed out. A lot of things are being cut away right now. A lot of things are being cut away. Future, friendships, travel, expectations. You know, think about think about um, what the Word of God said about circumcising little boys. They were to be circumcised on the eighth day. Why? Because on that day they were going to have more of that 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 substance in their blood, vitamin K. That substance in their blood that would cause the necessary coagulation, so that the circumcision wouldn't cause them to bleed excessively. And God is saying there's some circumcision taking place. You know, there's some cutting that our lifestyle, the things that we are used to doing is being cut, is being shifted. Things are changing, but God promises you're not going to bleed out. You're not going to bleed out. I've given you enough vitamin K. Minister Teresha, what was countdown seven? Enter into God's rest. Numbers oh. 4, 1, 3, 9 to 11. So enter into God's rest, repose in him. Mm -hmm. And we learned last week that to enter into God's rest, sometimes we need to give. And, and that opens the door to resting. When you release what God wants you to release, it causes you to rest because yes, now Lord. you know that you have sown into your own breakthrough. Yes, Lord. All right. And what was countdown number six? Recognize our likeness to the creator God. All right. And that was just like a mouthful to try to even explain any of that. You just have to go to the previous video. And what, what uh, scripture reference was uh, that? Genesis 1, 24 to 31. All right. And now we are on number five. All right. So here's some new material. Minister T, take it away. What is God saying? All right. Our prophetic countdown number five. Admon admonishes us to serve God with our hands and our walk. Yes, Lord. Serve the Lord with our hands and our walk. One author suggests that the number five mm -hmm. represents service, bondage, including debt, sickness, phobias, etc. Mm -hmm. Taxes, prison, mm -hmm. sin, mm -hmm. and motion. Oh, Jesus. He arrives at this conclusion by considering how the number five is used in scripture. And unlike many other believers, this author does not believe that five intrinsically means grace, which okay. is what we know it to mean. All right, and, and that's important. We need to pause right there because many believe that five means grace. But what I like about this particular author is that he uses scripture to gain some clarity as to the, the meaning behind numbers. I mean, he's not a, a numerologist or anything like that, but he uses scripture to identify God, what God's mind was behind, you know, numbers. And so when, when we look at number five and we look at how it's often used in scripture, this is how he arrived at the idea that it means debt and sickness and taxes and phobias and service, you know, so there's obviously some good things to it, but it, it does have a different connotation when you look at it in scripture uh, than what many suppose it, it means as grace. All right, let's look at our fingers. All right. Do you have hands? Hold them up. How many do you have on each hand? How many fingers? Five. In Five. most cases. In most cases. In most cases. In most cases. Five. Mm -hmm. And how many toes do you have on each foot? All right. Well, we're not going to show you our feet, but um, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I have. Believe us. We have five. <laughs> we have five on, on each, each foot. foot. <laughs> All right. If the number five can represent service, bondage, debt, and sin, 
metaphorically, we can conclude that our hands and feet, mm. if under subjection to the will of the Lord, can bring us into bondage, debt, sin, etc. So if our if our hands and our feet are not subject to the will of God, mm. then it, we can come into bondage. Yes. All right. So be careful what your hands do. Yes. Be careful where your feet lead you. Because if they are not subject to the will of God, we'll come into what? Bondage. Okay. While our hands speak of service, our feet speak of our heart and walk with the Lord. Oh, now this is going to get deep. Hang yes. on. Hang on, viewing audience. All right. So you have, you, you have your hands before you. Ecclesiastes 9.10 says, whatever you find, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all of your might. Psalm 90 and 17 says, let the favor of the Lord, our God, be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if you heard that, but it says, let the favor of the Lord, our God, be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. What you put your hand to do is going to be established Lord, back to you. It says, let the, let, and, and let the work of our hands be established upon us. Mm -hmm. So whatever you put your hands to do, you got to make sure it's, it's what you want to right. be established back in your life. Yes, establish the work of our hands. So whatever you put your hands to do, whether it's good or evil, guess what? It's going to be established. It's going to be established. So we need to make sure that our hands and our feet are subject to the will of God, that they serve God so that we don't bring ourselves oh and others God. into bondage. Proverbs 12, 24 says the hand of the diligent will rule while the slothful will be put to forced labor. So people who have lazy hands don't want to work. Mm -hmm. You're going to be a servant to others. But those who have diligent hands, let me let me put my hand to the plow. Let me let me find good things for my hands right. to do. God says that he's going to establish that and you're going to be prosperous. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about our feet. Proverbs 6, 16 and 18. These six things the Lord hates. Indeed, seven are repulsive to him. A heart that, the, that creates wicked plans, mm. feet that run mm. swiftly to evil. Mm. So now we're talking about the feet. And we said the hands represent our service, our work, but our feet, our feet represent our walk and our heart. Mm. Your feet, wherever your feet go, mm. reveals what's in your heart. Mm. If your feet leads you to the gambling house, then it's quite obvious that there's a heart issue. If your feet lead you to the whorehouse, then it's quite obvious that there's a heart issue. Do you understand? So where your feet lead is a telltale sign of what's in the heart. All right, Minister T, I want you to read this information on the vascular system. The vascular system is connected from your heart to your toes. Okay, so let's just pause right there. So this is not just a spiritual uh, right, matter. Right. This is physical. Oh, yes. So the vascular system is connected from your heart to your toes. And God knew that. God did all of that. And this is why there's a there's scripture reference that shows us our feet dictate, uh, or our heart dictate our feet, and our feet reveal our heart. Our feet, our heart dictates our feet, and our feet reveal our heart. So your heart says where your feet will walk. And where your feet go reveals what's in your heart. Mm. That is incredible. <laughs> Jesus. Peripheral vascular disease, also known as peripheral arterial disease, had, mm -hmm. is a blockage in the arteries connected to your legs and feet. This form of cardiovascular disease goes beyond the heart, but the vascular system is all connected. All right. So the simplest test to screen for PAD is to have your physician check for the pulses in your feet hmm. during a routine wow. physical exam. In each foot, there should be two pulses that are easily detected by a trained physician. This test is performed to determine whether the blood flow to your feet is normal. Mm. Isn't that incredible? Walk normal? It, Minister T, say it again. Is your walk normal? Is your walk normal? How are you walking? Oh, Jesus. Mm. Isaiah 59, 7 to 8 declares, Their feet run to evil. Mm. And they rush to shed innocent blood. Oh my God. Their thoughts are thoughts of wickedness, mm. of sin, injustice, and of wrongdoing. Mm. Devastation and destruction are in their highways. They do not know the way of peace, and there is no justice in their tracks. Wow. 
They have made them into crooked paths. Whoever walks on them does not know peace. Wow. You know, I'm looking at this, and for the first time, I'm seeing all these references to feet. Their feet run mm -hmm. to evil. Mm -hmm. You know, and then it talks about highways, and those are things that you walk on. You know, and then it talks about their tracks. Yes. And then it talks about their paths. Yes. And then it talks about walk, the walk. And so God is really trying to get it through to us yes. that our feet are dictated our feet our walk the things where you know where we are led to mm. it shows what's in our heart all right so the lord spoke these words to the church and this is what he wants the church to hear he says i've given you governmental authority church we have authority oh, Jesus, i've you. given you governmental authority to get the work done that i've called you to do but like a car without gas your efforts are futile without prayer you need to pray to finance the work of your hands mm. and you need to pray to keep your steps in line with me and so god is saying if if the church is going to be effective if we're going to we're going to walk the walk that he wants us to and if we're going to do the work that he's called us to do we've got to pray because prayer will keep your heart right and keep your walk right do you know how many people i've seen leave the kingdom of god the heart started acting funny the start, heart started acting funny. And you know what? Maybe I couldn't see what was in the heart. But I, but I ultimately learned what was in their heart by where their feet took them. Right. And so God is saying, stay in contact and union with him by praying. And it will fortify you. It will keep you from the temptation of the enemy. Stay in prayer so that your hands, the work of your hands is blessed. Mm -hmm. and, and you can do the things mm -hmm. that God has called you to do. Prayer will cleanse your heart and order your steps aright. So you don't have that Lord. abnormal walk that Minister T was talking about yes, earlier. Lord. Yes, Lord. Well, we all know that the mathematical equation of five plus five equals ten. ten. Five plus five is ten. <laughs> trying to find the camera. All right. We have ten fingers and ten toes. And in this new decade, mm. we need to be about our father's business and, and harvest souls for his kingdom. He is coming back soon mm. and too many are on their way to hell because their hands and feet of the church refuse to do the work of the harvest all right so the church that is not you know doing the work of the harvest is is not giving people an opportunity to come into the kingdom and so god is saying listen put these hands to work and put these feet to work and bring people into the kingdom as this 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 uh, virus COVID nineteen is going around the world, and I, I will not claim that it has dominance over the entire world, but it's visiting many places in the world. Uh, God is saying this is a perfect time to tell people about Jesus Christ, who is the healer; Jesus Christ, who is the deliverer; Jesus Christ, who is the way maker. Listen, Jesus rose from the dead. It is not just a biblical account; it is a secular account in secular writings. Uh, it is noted mm. that some man named Jesus he rose from the dead all right and so what am I saying he's not dead he's alive and he is well able to handle every situation every circumstance that COVID-19 has created there is no need to fear the church needs to rise up from its place of complacency or wondering what to do twiddling our thumbs and say listen we have authority God show us show us how to make make good out of this show us show us how to bring you some glory out of this Use this as an opportunity to introduce people to Jesus Christ, who can save, who can protect, and who can deliver. Listen, I love God. Mm. In February, before COVID became what it was, as far as the global scape, the Lord, you know, we've been in days of prayer, days of prayer, to be 50 days of prayer in, in the next week or so. But we were, you know, in the midst of prayer, and the Lord said, anoint your homes. Anoint your homes and, and declare the blood of Jesus protection over your home. And when the death angel passes, he have to keep on moving because the blood has been pled over your home. So like they did in the book of Exodus, I believe chapter 12, they took the blood of the lamb and they applied it to the lintel on the door post. And when that death angel had come, he had to pass on over those houses. And I think about how good God is that he had us do that prophetic exercise. We were not even aware that COVID would be the threat to us that it has become, but, but our doors are covered under the blood of Jesus. 
our doors, you know, because God doesn't dwell in buildings made with man's hands. This is where he's really dwelling. He was really saying, listen, I've got your back. You're, yes. you're covered. Yes. I'm not going to let any harm come to you. And this was his promise to us even before we knew that there was a mm. threat. Awesome God. Awesome God. So this is the God that the that, that the world needs to be introduced yes, to the one who protects, the one who, who, who preserves, the one who restores, the one who heals, the one who loves. Mm. And so it's time for us as the church to put these hands to work and reach souls for the kingdom. All right, mm. number four. All right, be light. Mm -hmm. Genesis 1, 14 to 19 states, then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens mm -hmm. to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years Jesus. and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on on the earth and it was so then god made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night he made the stars also god set them in the firmament of the heavens to give a light on the earth oh, Jesus. and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness Ooh. and God saw that it was good so the evening and the morning were the fourth day all right now this is exciting mm -hmm. on day four mm -hmm. God made daylight he made and he also made night lights in yes. other words the stars you know so that you, you can see the stars you have the sun and so god made light on the fourth day god made the sun and the moon which receives light from the sun to reflect it and so god made the sun and the moon and he made the stars now the creation of these lights was strategic and intentional hmm. and it has a metaphoric value to those who are born again believers their purpose was to provide illumination. This is what light does. It yes. provides illumination. Yes. It provides separation mm. and shows signs and seasons. Mm. All right. So God made the lights to make a division between light and darkness. Mm. All right. So in Matthew 5, 14 through 16, the Lord says about believers, read that for me, Minister T. You are the light of the world. Oh, Jesus. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and gives light to all who are in the house. Jesus. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. All right. So just as the lights in the beginning, when God created the lights, just as those in the beginning were created to demarcate the boundary of light and dark, yes. to give illumination and to declare signs and seasons, Believers in Christ oh, hey, are light bearers and we are expected to do likewise. So this is the, the countdown number four. God said, be light. And when he says be light, he says he is saying demarcate, draw the line, the line between what is light and what is dark. Mm -hmm. He is he is saying be light, shine in the midst of darkness. Oh, he is saying be light, be a sign and a wonder. Oh, be light. That's what we are oh. called to be to be light we are light bearers god has called us as uh, to to make a distinction between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness too many in the church don't know what is of god and what is of the devil you know too many of us can't discern light from dark but god says those who are light bearers those who are born again can distinguish yes, between Lord. light and dark yes, you know Lord. what is of god yes, and you Lord. know what is of the yes, devil Lord. understand this when i when i say this the devil masquerades as an angel of light and too many in the church buy his facade. But God is saying, I've made you a light bearer. Not only are you to illuminate, but you are to discern what is truly light and what is darkness. We are to shine in the darkness. And darkness can represent ignorance and bring illumination and understanding where it is lacking. So when God says, be light, he, say, be, he is saying, be understanding. Bring understanding. Bring wisdom. You know, when the church comes up on a scene, and, and 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 you know people don't know what to do the church needs to have an answer Amen. god is saying be light right there they don't know what to do Amen. be light Amen. bring bring light bring illumination bring my counsel bring my will yes, bring Lord. my strategy i don't know this this excites me listen hmm. to this believers as light bearers are to be signs and wonders remember when god made light that was one of their responsibilities to be signs and wonders or to 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 
be a, a, an indication of a, a seasons that were to come. And we are to be signs and wonders of God's power in this earth. The wise men who traveled from the east mm. to worship Jesus followed a star mm. or a light. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing this? Mm -hmm. yes. The wise men who traveled from uh. the east to worship Jesus, they finally found Jesus by following a star or a light, yes. and it led them right wow. to the feet of the wow. Savior. Believers are to be a guiding yes. light yes. into the presence of the Lord. The time to shine for Jesus is God. now. God is saying, I need you to be that guiding light that will lead people right to the feet of My the Lord. Jesus. Understand that these were wise men. They, they were men of intelligence they mm -hmm. had understanding and they were wise enough to follow the star mm -hmm. so wise people follow the light that's right <laughs> wise people don't stay in darkness and they follow that star oh, and follow that star oh, the, the, the the most profound one in the sky and god is saying as a light bearer if you are born again you are a light bearer he says let let, let people follow your light to me yes, jesus yes lord minister t that excites me <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Huh. Mm -mm. Wow. That, that's, that's some good news right there. Amen. We have a heavy Amen. responsibility. Jesus, yes. God is saying, be light. It's, it's speaking to our purpose. It's speaking to Jesus. what we're here to do, what we're here for. This is, this is who we are. Jesus. My yeah. God. You know, Minister T, as you said, it's, it's, you know, leading us into purpose. It's identifying our purpose. As light bearers, yes. we are to lead people to Jesus Christ. Now, we know that in, in many countries, the church can't gather the way, you know, it used to. We need to be light in this situation. Mm -hmm. You know, this is an opportunity somehow. This is an opportunity. Okay, so you can't my fellowship Lord. the way you used to. God is saying, be light. Be light, be light. Mm. Don't let don't let the situation darken your light or snuff out your light. Be light. This is an opportunity wow. for pastors wow. to see what they have invested in their in their uh, uh, congregants. If you have if you have given them the word, uh, if you have fed them, if you have you know uh, uh, taught them and trained them, uh, then you don't have to worry. When this is all said and done, they're going to be fine. They're going to be well fed. They're going to you know not only be taking care of themselves, but they're going to be ministering to other people. Amen. Minister T, what would happen if uh, we if we couldn't meet? <laughs> I don't know, uh, a Skype meeting. A Skype some meeting. There's all some shifts going on with, you know, meeting up with each other, encouraging one another. Okay, so there's ways to do it, but what if we couldn't, what, what if we couldn't do that? Are, are, are you prepared to, you know, minister in your home and your husband, you and your husband? Of course. Of yes. course. Yes. You don't need me there. No. No. <laughs> And that's what I'm saying. This is what we do all the time. This is what we do all the time. You know, uh, my husband and I, we're the pastors of Clarion Ministries, and Minister Teresa serves in the ministry. I am her pastor, but she don't need me. If the, if the church can't meet, we're going to be all right. Yes. I don't have to worry about the sheep that God has given me. Oh, They're going to be just Jesus. fine because they have been instructed to be light bearers. Amen. They can Amen. shine right where they are. Amen. And I know that when the darkness is over, They'll be the, hey, they'll Jesus. be increased in light. Hey, when Jesus. I see them, I will I will recognize that they have been with oh, Jesus, Jesus because their light will shine. And so this is an opportunity for soul on so many levels to let our light shine. We we can't let the the, the situation darken our light because we are light. Oh, Whenever light shines, darkness has to run. Mm. Oh Jesus. Mm. Minister T continue. Mm, mm. I was just looking at this verse, right, Apostle? Verse 14 or 15. 15. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a light a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Jesus. Is, isn't that where we're being asked to stay? In, in the, the house. In, stay in a house. <laughs> While you're in the house, <laughs> give light to all who are in the house. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You know what? Uh you you may be in indoors with some relatives who are not born again exactly. be light be light be light where's the shine minister t this is uh matthew chapter 5 verses 14 
through 16. And Minister T said, listen, she took note that the light is to shine where? In the house. Oh, we're in the house. That's where you got to shine it. So if, oh you, if you're locked down, you know, if you're locked down, shine that light. Amen. Shine that light. I love that, Minister Thank T. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So God also uses light to demonstrate dominion and rule. When God created mankind on day six, he gave us dominion over birds and fish and the beasts. Oh, Jesus. When he created the lights on day four, he made the sun, the brighter light to have dominion over the lesser light. Jesus. Now, Jesus is the sun. Woo! So God made the S-U-N, mm -hmm. and Jesus is the S-O-N, Amen. the light of the world. We are made in the image of God and after his likeness. Mm. We are light bearers mm. and are expected to take authority over darkness the same way that the S-U-N mm. takes authority over natural darkness. My Jesus. So in the midst of the darkness in the earth, be light. Mm. With shine with answers shine with peace mm. you may be in situations where you could see chaos you could feel it oh jesus i love that mm. be light my be God. the peace giver be my the peacemaker God. shine with comfort and shine with help and shine mm. for and in the name of jesus my god Romans 8, 28 declares, and we know that all things work together for those, for good, for those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. My God. And as difficult as it may be to believe, something good is coming out of this pandemic. Oh, Jesus, I believe it. I believe. I believe it. Something good. Father, I believe it. On the premise of God's word, that all things work together for those who love the Lord. Love work together for good. For, all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Something good is coming out of this pandemic. Jesus. Believers in Christ must shine the light of truth that God is able. Oh, oh we can't be pining away with everybody else. That's right, Minister T. We must believe that Christ is able, that God is able to bring good out of any difficulty that we find ourselves in. You must believe that right where you are. There is some good to come out of this because all things work together for good. For who? To those who love God. So if you don't love God, then this is not working for your good. So this is a great reason to serve the Lord. Yes. Listen, this is not a promise to everyone. To the believer in Christ, this is going to work for your good. You're going to look back and say, God, only you could yes. have worked this out yes. for my good. Yes. And if you are not born again, if you have not surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, this is a perfect reason to do so. This pan pandemic will work for your good. Yes. It will work for your household's good. You don't even try to figure out how that's going to happen. God is going to make it work together for your good if you love him. I love that. Yes. All right, and now we're to countdown number three. Yes. You know what? We're going to do this thing, Minister yes. We're going to do this thing. All miracle is here. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, so countdown number three. You know, we get to 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. What is God saying? The phrase, in three days, is said uh, to be mentioned 75 times in the mm. Bible. Jesus rose on the third day, Matthew 28, 5. Esther went before the king after three days of fasting, Esther 5, 1 mm, through 3. Mm, mm. Jonah was in the belly of the great fish three days and nights, Jonah 1, 17. Mm. Saul was blind for three days. You're getting the picture, right? <laughs> Acts 9, 9. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place, Mount Moriah, from afar. There he intends to offer his son Isaac as a burnt offering to God. Yet he assures his companions, we will worship and return. Genesis 22, 4 mm. through 5. On the third day, Pharaoh releases his chief cupbearer from death row. Genesis 40, 20 to 21. On the third day, Joseph releases his brothers from prison in Egypt. Genesis 42, 17, 18. Are you getting the picture? On the third day, a famine called for by Elijah, the prophet ends. 1 Kings 18, 1. On the third day, after asking God for release, King Hezekiah is healed of his fatal disease and offers thanks in the temple. 2 Kings 20 and 5. Genesis 1, 11 through 13 says of the third day of creation. Listen to this. So God said, let the earth, that's you and me. Oh, Jesus. 
that's you and me, we are earthen vessels, let the earth, you and me, sprout, sprout, tender vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit according to according to limited and consistent with their kind, whose seed is in them upon the earth. And it was so. The earth sprouted. You're sprouting. Not Jesus. The earth sprouted. The earth sprouted uh. and abundantly produced vegetation. God says abundantly produced. My Lord. Oh, Lord. And, and we're in the third month. Don't get me started. Ooh. We're in the third month. Don't yes, get me started. Lord. So the earth sprouted and abundantly produced vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their kind, and trees bearing fruit with seed in them according to their kind. And God saw that it was good and he affirmed and sustained it. And there was evening and there was morning a third day. Now, you know, I just want to park up right there for a quick second. God says, this is that day. This is that oh, day. Jesus. This is the third oh, day. Jesus. You as earth and vessels are supposed oh, to Jesus. sprout. You're supposed to bring forth oh, life. Oh, You're supposed to bring forth uh, uh, good things. You're supposed to bring forth something that my somebody God. can eat. My God. You're supposed hmm. to reproduce and sprout. God says this is the third day. Begin to reproduce. Begin to sprout. Begin to begin to be a vessel that others can eat from, mm -hmm. that others can be blessed from. Imagine God is having us bring this message in what? The third month. As if we needed further confirmation. God is saying this is that third day. Now listen, listen to what the, the the author says about the third day and what it really means. He says three days or after three days is a symbolic expression for divine intervention and restoration after a time of trial. Lord, I claim that right now. Yes, Somebody Lord. needs to hear that again. Yes, Lord. One author says right that the third day or after three days is a symbolic expression for divine intervention and restoration after a time of trial oh, are we in a time of trial oh, yes we are the world scape is in a time of trial father i'm claiming yes, prophetically father. right now yes, in the name of yes, jesus father. your divine intervention yes, it's the third month father yeah. symbolic of the third day and i claim your intervention for the global yes, community father, and bring deliverance father from oh, covid 19 jesus. in the yes, name Lord. of jesus christ of nazareth in other words uh, on the third day or after three days is a time of breakthrough. Yes, this is the third month Jesus. and I am believing yes, God Jesus. for a breakthrough. Ooh. Three months into the new year, we've had lots of trouble. God, we My can take Lord. a breakthrough right, right now. now Jesus. Right now. As noted mm. from the scripture reference, a breakthrough or event takes place that only God can instigate mm. and bring forth. Mm. And so listen, light bearers, we need, we need to be proclaiming that God is breaking through uh, and he is subduing our enemies uh, and My specifically God at this time subduing cold bed 19 yes, uh, there is pressure that builds up before the third day so we're under pressure there's pressure there's tension there's trial there's struggle and then after three days there's a release what comes after three days? Divine intervention. God. God, I claim it right, right here, now. Right Wherever here, right you now, are, God. you're in a situation and you need God's intervention. You need divine intervention. Man can't help mm, you. Woman mm, can't mm, help mm, you. Bank mm, can't mm. help you. Job can't help you. Wife can't help you. Jesus. Husband can't help you. God says, I've got your breakthrough. Divine Praise intervention the is now. Praise Jesus. The Lord. the Lord says, this is the Ooh. third day. Thank you, Lord. Could it be any better? We're oh. in the third month. Minister, do you know how long we've had this message? Yes, Apostle. And we haven't brought it to the to the audience until now. It's God's divine Jesus, timing. Jesus. Claim it, claim it, claim it. This is the third day. If you don't want to claim it, I'll claim oh, your portion right oh, now. Jesus. God, we need intervention. Globally, we need intervention. Yes, Households need intervention. Yes, Churches need intervention. God, yes. Marriages need intervention. Parents need intervention. We need intervention, yes, God. Lord. This is that day. Declare it over your life My right God. now. We are sharing this message with My you God. in the third month. And I believe this is a prophetic yes. signpost to all of us saying that divine intervention is on yes, its Lord. way. Lord. Jesus, we I believe the Lord. Lord. My God. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that you're intervening in the world right now and eradicating COVID-19 in Jesus' name. name. Amen. 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 Mm. My God, Lord. Jesus, anybody out there excited? Anybody out there overjoyed over what the word has promised? Amen. I'm sure you're out there, you're listening, you're saying, thank you, Jesus. Yes, intervention is here. Yeah, Lord. Divine intervention. That's here. right. There's a difference between yes. intervention and divine yes. intervention. I'll yes. take the latter. Divine intervention. For <laughs> me, please. For me, uh, also. 
we are on spiritual countdown number two. Mm-hmm. As 2020 has a reference to visual acuity, prophetically speaking, the Lord is giving us sight and insight to see past and through barriers to our place of victory. Mm. You don't want to miss this. Mm. You will be able to see with x-ray vision, as it were, past the things that present themselves as blockages to momentum and blessing. Wow. Your sight is increasing so that you are able to see the plan of God in the midst of a challenge. Thank you, Jesus. My God, the Lord will remove eye impediments that distort your ability to see by faith. Oh. For we walk by faith and not by sight, according to 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Let's talk about the lazy eye. Oh. Lazy eye is also known as amblyopia. It is an early childhood condition in which a child's <laughs> eyesight does not develop as it should in one eye. Oh, my Lord. When a patient has amblyopia, the brain focuses on one eye more than the other. Mm. And guess one? Guess which one? Mm. Which mm. one is it focusing on? Hey. The one that's working properly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it virtually ignores the lazy eye. Wow. Genesis 29, 17 says of Leah, Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful in form and appearance. Wow. There are many interpretations for the weakness of Leah's eyes, from beautiful to eye impediments and disfigurement. Mm. Leah's, me Leah's name means wary. Jesus. Listen to, listen to this carefully. Leah's name means wary. Mm. To tire, mm. or to get tired easily, mm. to make disgusting, well. be impatient, to be tired of something, mm. and to weary oneself. Leah's name suggests that the meaning of the weakness in her eyes is negative. Mm. Symbolically speaking, her name was reflective of how she saw things. Wow. Her vision was weak. Mm. impatient mm. and tired mm. not able to see beyond her own soul's trouble and into a place of victory jesus now if you're with us come on do this put your hand over one of your eyes and take a look around okay <laughs> all right and now just start look around with that one eye that's exposed mm -hmm. and see how much you can see all right did you do it Mm. Okay. Is your scope of vision limited? Could you see everything that you wanted to see? Can you see as fully as you would have if you had both eyes available? Mm. What was missing from your vision when your hand was covering your eyes? Tight. Do you want a lazy <laughs> eye? No. Or do you want weak eyes? I don't. No. Of course not. All right. So you've removed your hand. And now I want you to decree and declare that you have the vision of the Lord, that you have eyes that see by faith, that you have eyes that see past problems. Come on, declare, I have the vision of the Lord. The vision of the Lord. I have eyes that see by faith. I have eyes that see by faith. I have eyes that see past challenges. I have eyes that see past challenges. And see solutions. And see solutions. In Jesus' Jesus name. name. Amen. All right, and so God, this is what God is doing. He has given us sight to see beyond COVID-19, sight to see beyond the trouble that has come with it. We have sight as the church. Praise we God. walk by Praise faith God. and not by sight. Now, there are various re reasons why we may at times be unable to see hmm. the way God sees, and there are many reasons for that. We can't go into that too much because we do want to get to point one, but some of the things that we can point out is when we're sad, hmm. when we're disappointed. Yes. Yes. When we're tired, we don't see the, the, the way we should. Yes. We, can, we, we have a reference of this in Genesis 21. Genesis 21, 15 through 19, we can see that there was something right there in, the, in someone's face, but they couldn't mm. see it because they were despondent, mm. they were sad. Mm. What does the Word of God declare, Minister T? When the water in the skin was all gone, Hagar abandoned the boy under one of the bushes. Mm. Then she went and sat down opposite him. Mm. about a bow shot away. For mm. she said, do not let me see the boy die. Mm. 
and as she sat down opposite him, she raised her voice and wept. Mm. God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Mm. Don't be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy from where he is resting. Mm. Get up, help the boy up, and hold him by the hand, for I will take him to I will make him a great nation. Jesus. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the empty skin with water and gave the boy a drink. Wow. All right. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's let's look at this now. Mm -hmm. The Lord opened her eyes and she saw the well of water. Yes. The well of water was always there. Yes. It was always there. It's not like God created a well, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, for her to go and get some water. It was always there. But despair prevented Hagar from seeing the provision. Yes. I don't know how many days she wandered in the wilderness before oh, the Lord, Lord opened her eyes oh, to see the well. But I know that for some of us, for some of us, we have wandered through dry places of family problems, of health issues, oh emotional God. and psychological Jesus. problems, of financial burdens, closed doors, etc. And so we've been wandering in some places of difficulty for a long time. And our wilderness wandering has impacted our vision. Now our, our, our vision is clouded over with oh wilderness. God. All we can see is wilderness. All we can see is trouble. But God is saying, no, I am opening your eyes to see the breakthrough and the blessing that has always Thank been there. The Lord said that when we have gone through a barren place for a considerable amount of time, it becomes difficult to see the blessings that are literally coexisting mm. with us right there. Mm. The well was always there. Mm. Right in our wilderness wandering is the provision we need to break through, but we need to see the provision. Wow. Provision. Now, the prefix pro has a plethora of meanings. Some of those meanings, and, and specifically the root, for pro are for, meaning favor, and forward, meaning to advance. Pro, meaning favor or mm. for, and advance, forward. When the angel of the Lord called out to Hagar, he, he let her know that the boy was heard by God, favored mm -hmm. by God. Mm -hmm. God was for him. <laughs> and to get up, move forward in advance, and get the boy. The Lord then opened, gave vision to Hagar, and she saw the well that was always there. God says he's opening your eyes to see the My well Jesus of provision that was always fire. there, to see the answer that was always there. But I'm hearing him say that in order to get that shift, you need to lift up your voice and call out to him. Mm. You know, Hagar cried. Jesus. We don't know what was entailed in her cry. God is saying, cry out, and I'm going to open your eyes. Jesus. Ooh, Jesus, I feel that. Cry out, and I'm going to open your eyes to see what's already there. There is a well right in the midst of your desperation. Don't run away. Stand oh, your ground. Stand your ground. Mm. We don't have time to go into more of this. Mm. We don't have time to go into more of this. But God is saying, it's, it's mm. time for you to lift up your voice. It's when Hagar lifted up her voice and the son cried out. You mm. notice that the boy cried out too. Yes. God heard the crying of the boy. Yes. Why? Because he was favored by God because of his connection to Abraham. Wow. If you are a child of God, then you are the seed of Amen. Abraham. And not only does God see the promise that you have abandoned under some bush because things Jesus. have gotten difficult, not only does God see that promise that's crying out and saying, I've been abandoned, I've been abandoned, but God hears your voice. God didn't respond.